Okay, this video gets into how to plot these. So we'll do, uh, we have four different examples, so let's start with these two. Now, typically what you're gonna see with polar coordinates is usually we have a type of polar grid paper is gonna actually look something like this. It's gonna look like a, a bullseye. So I'll go ahead and I'll do this problem with the polar grid, but then I'll show you how you can do it if you don't have uh, this grid paper, how you can do it without it. So but technically, uh, we really should be having this type of polar grid paper here. We have uh, the angles are always measured from the positive x-axis. The rings here tell you how far you are away from the center, and that's where the, the radius is gonna come into play there. So if you wanna plot four and three pi over four, uh, here's how we'll do it. If you don't like the uh, radian measurement, you can always convert that and change it back over into degrees. And if you do, that's going to be 135 degrees. So we're going to first draw 135 degrees. Now that's going to be the angles between 90 and 180, which means that it's going to be about right here. So what I'll do is I'm just going to go ahead and draw this line. So it means that this part measured from here, here to here would be 135. Then what you do is you just count the rings whatever the radius is, the radius is four, so I do one, two, three, four rings, my point would be plotted right there. So if I had polar graphing paper or grid paper, this is exactly where it would be. Now suppose we don't have the grid paper, how are we gonna do this? Okay, so what you do is you're going to, you start the angle here at the origin, 135 would be in the second quadrant, so we would go, start out by drawing a line here, and I would label that 135 degrees or three pi over four. And then to get the four there, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count four on that line and I would, I would plot it right there. So it still ends up in the same spot, it ends up in the second quadrant right there. It's just that instead of using the, uh, the grid paper here on this, the polar grid system, I'm basically just graphing it out like this. So this is how you would do it without that. So let's do the same thing down here. We'll do it without the, the grid. So again, when you do, we draw that and Five pi over three, and if you don't like radians, you can convert it over into degrees. That would be 300 degrees by using the formula, the 180 over pi formula would convert it to 300. So that means that you have something that's drawn down here in the fourth quadrant. So that's gonna be drawn here. It's gonna go all around there. This is gonna be my five pi over three uh, angle. And then what I'll do is the line that's drawn here, all I'm gonna do is count down five. Now, the spacing here, just try and, try and make it even. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter exactly what the spacing actually is, but as long as you make it kind of the same all the way down, make it uniform. And then the point will end up down below there. So I have a point that's gonna be drawn in the uh, fourth quadrant. So the ones I've done so far have positive R's and positive thetas. So the next two examples, we'll take a look at if you have uh, a negative r or if you have a negative theta. Okay, for parts c through e, these are gonna be involving negative r's or negative thetas, so let's take a look at these examples. Now these problems I'm gonna do without the, that uh, polar grid paper, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it uh, kinda like I did the other videos where we just draw it uh, using this. Okay, so we have negative three and 120 degrees. Now, if you have a negative r, what I like to do here for this is I'm gonna draw a dotted line because that means I have to do something different. It reminds me I need to do something different there. So at 120, I'm gonna go ahead and draw in the 120 angle, which should be right here. But notice that I'm actually using a dotted line instead of a solid line. That's because when you have a negative R, what you have to do is you're gonna reverse that exactly 180 degrees in the other direction. So I normally I would go with here and I would count my three, I would go along that line. However, here, I'm reversing it exactly 180 degrees in the other direction. So that's I count out three places down here. So the one I'm counting on, I'm gonna go ahead and put a solid line there. My answer ends up down there uh, in the fourth quadrant. So this will be the correct graph for that one, negative three and 120 degrees, okay? So again, you, uh, you draw that out with a dotted line Negative means reverse it exactly 180 degrees in the other direction. Now for this one, okay, when we draw that, negative pi over two is the same thing as negative 90. So I would begin by going down this way. For negative angles, remember you gotta go clockwise. So I'm gonna go down that way. 
So technically here, if I do, I would have a dotted line going down that way. So I go down negative 90. I reverse it exactly 180 degrees in the other direction. I'm just gonna count three going up this way. So right there, the dot actually ends up on the, the y-axis here. So I count three places up here, that's where the dot ends up being. So right there uh, is where my point's gonna end up at. For this one, three pi over four, that's the same thing as negative 135. And so for this one, I'm going to first draw negative 135 and I'm gonna indicate that with a dotted line. Now remember this right here is a negative angle, so we have to go clockwise again. So from here, we're gonna go clockwise 135, that's uh, zero, negative 90, negative 180. So that means that this angle is gonna end up here. I'm gonna draw a dotted line because once again, you always want to indicate that uh, dotted line. That's not the one that you're going to count on. You want to reverse it in the other direction. And now that's going to take you actually up into the first quadrant. So I do one, two, three. And right there is where the dot ends up at. It'll end up here in the um, first quadrant. So I went, I did negative 135. I went this way. Negative angles always go clockwise. Dotted line there, reverse it 180 angle ends up there, or the, the dot ends up in the uh, first quadrant, that's where the coordinate uh, would be at. So we've done now parts A through E. Uh, the, the next videos that we'll be talking about talk about how you can have an equivalent point. So in other words, suppose I didn't want to have a negative R value, I wanted to change it to make it a positive R value, could I arrive at the same spot? That's what the next uh, video is going to talk about, equivalent polar coordinates.